Hello, welcome to Learning Tech 101. My name is Renik, and today what we're going to discuss is network topologies. So the first one we're going to talk about is the bus topology. So this has all the devices connected to a single shared cable. Bus topologies you're not going to see very often nowadays. Probably very rare that you actually come across one. Computers in a bus topology physically tap into this single cable using special adapters. Now, on the end of this cable is what you're going to have is these terminators, which are just resistors. And they're there to kill the signal once it's reached that point. Now, the thing about a bus topology is only one device can communicate at a time. So bus topologies are what's considered half duplex, meaning you can't transmit or receive at the same time. If you do... Um, so if two devices actually do try to do uh, transmit at the same time, you'll start end up having collisions. And that was a huge problem with the bus topology. Now, once someone sends something out, everyone that is connecting to that single cable are all going to receive it. So everyone gets what it gets, whatever is sent out by anyone that is connected to that bus topology. Now, our next one we'll talk about is the ring topology. So in this one, the computers are connected in the form of a closed loop. The computers are connected in a single line, meaning one after the other. So each computer on the ring has an input port and an output port. So your input port connects to the next person and the person in front of you connects to your out. I'm sorry, your output port connects to the next person and your input port connects to uh, the person in front of you. So the thing is, when data has to get sent around, it's actually sent to the next person. They look at it, see if it's for them, it's not for them. They send it to the next person, and if it's not for them, they send it to the next person until it eventually gets to the one it's intended for. Now, this, was make, this makes the ring more reliable than the bus. Because the thing with the um, ring topology is the data travels in one direction. So it's either all going clockwise or all going counterclockwise. So now you don't have the collisions if that is all flowing in the same direction. And it's not that if you send something out and I send something out, we're both connected to a ring where yours is faster than mine or anything like that. Now, they have the um, they created what's called a dual ring topology. And this was to correct one of the issues that ring topology has is that if a device or a connection between devices goes down, you can't send anything past that device now. So now with a dual ring, you're able to drop down onto the second ring and it goes in the opposite direction. So now it's going to be able to take the other direction, but still be able to get to uh, devices that are beyond that device or connection that is down. Now, our next one is the star topology. So this is also going to be known as hub and spoke networks. So this is composed of a central network device. Most times it's either gonna be a switch or a hub. Nowadays, switches primarily make up most of your star topologies. Each device is individually connected to this central device. So that means if a device goes down, it only necessarily affects them, doesn't really affect anyone else. Now, as I mentioned, star topologies are gonna to be your most common found in LANs. Next one we got is your mesh topology. So you have two types of mesh topology. You have a full mesh and then you have a partial mesh. So in a full mesh, every node is connected to every other node. In a partial mesh, you're connected to multiple other nodes, but not to the point where you're connected to everyone. Now, typically this is used for requirements of high availability and high redundancy, because that's the thing about the mesh topology compared to any of the ones we covered so far. It doesn't have a single point of failure. So if a link goes down or a device goes down, you're still able to reach anywhere else in this network by taking one of the other connections that you have. Now, the thing about this though, it's going to be the most expensive and most complex topology. Our next one is the tree topology. So it's actually a combination of both the star and the bus topology. In this, the network is divided into multiple layers. So your top device is gonna be known as your root node and then everything is going to connect down from there. So each level after that is gonna be considered a different level or layer. So each device after that considers a different level or layer. Uh, now, the tree topology has a child or a parent-child hierarchy between the nodes. And then our last one is the hybrid topology. So this is a combination of different topologies. So you may have a, in, 
the depiction right here, we got a ring connecting to a star topology. So it's a combination of both of them connecting together. Now, they inherit the advantages and disadvantages of each of these combined topologies. So whether issues are with the ring topology, if it's part of your hybrid, then your hybrid's also going to have those issues as well. Now, the thing about the hybrid is it offers the benefit of flexibility and it's very effective and scalable, but it is also costly. Hopefully you found this helpful and I appreciate you watching 